Millie, Jumpy, and our kids as we find the extraordinary wonder in our ordinary lives. Welcome to Wonderlust. This morning we've been having lions in the holidays, which has been really, really nice actually. We've just arrived in St. John's Island. We booked last night and I'm really glad we did because when we got to the boat at about 10 to 10, it was already pretty full. The kids are hungry, so we're gonna feed them first of all, and then we're gonna head over to explore the island. And then head over to Lazarus where Junty has been before. Um, we haven't, so I'm really excited to just be here somewhere where I've never been at all. Looks quite different over here. Holiday vibes, tropical. It's gonna be a good day. Just seen a sign telling us about coral reefs around here. We do have some snorkels, we didn't bring them today, so that might be something for another time. It also says that there are often dolphins off St John's Island, which would be so cool to see that. And it's great to know that there's lots of like biodiversity and all things like that growing here. Coral reefs means the water's really good. So yeah, really, really good to hear about all of that things around here. Sometimes people say that the water around Singapore is really dirty, but I guess here it's fine because there's lots of things growing. <laughs> I feel a little bit sorry for the kids because they've just found, uh, found the sand and the sea and they're excited about it and we've just said no let's just go for a little walk around the island and check it out first and um, obviously like an eight-year-old and a six-year-old kid just wants to go and play on the beach right rather than hang out with their parent walking around an island but they're coming anyway so hopefully they'll learn to appreciate it in time. This island is beautiful, but it's got a bit of a dark past. I was looking up some information yesterday about it and it was used as a prisoner of war camp and also for people who potentially might have had cholera. There's a big cholera outbreak. So if you were on a ship coming to Singapore, you would have had to have been stationed here for a week first to make sure that you were well and fit, cholera free to go into Singapore, which we're kind of used to doing a stay home notice. We did ours in a five star hotel. And I'm guessing if you were coming here back then, the conditions for your stay home notice probably wouldn't have been as nice. Yeah, I wonder if these were one of those prison cells that Melody was talking about. It's all been boarded up now. Just walking around here, we can hear lots of different types of birds that we haven't heard before in any of the jungle walks that we've done. You can hear the cicadas still, as always, ever present in Singapore. But yeah, I'd love to have a look at what kind of birds we might be able to spot. We've bought Jumpy's camera that's got a zoom lens, so hopefully we'll be able to spot a little bit of different wildlife. If you're into your trees, there are 10 heritage trees here, and there's a walk that you can do that tells you lots about them different types of trees. Oh, Some of them are really, really huge. Again, other ones that we haven't seen on the main island. Ooh, nearly fell down there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it just fell off the path. So look where you're walking. <laughs> There's an area here that you can camp. They've got lodges and I think the lodges have like beds and kitchens and bathrooms. This would be a really nice place to come with a bunch of friends when uh, things open up a little more and things like that are able to happen again. Because I think a weekend here, you just feel really, really rested. We were talking about different bird sounds and I can hear a cuckoo and that sound will forever remind me of the UK and camping because when you wake up in the morning that's kind of one of the only things you can hear is a cuckoo and uh, yeah trying to listen out for it again but really nice to hear different sounds makes you feel like you're really away for a bit. 
interesting looking bug. Hmm? We've got no idea what this is behind us. It kind of looks a bit like a detention centre. Um, it's got fencing all around it, barbed wire at the top, um, and a block of cubicles or toilets or something a bit further along. Um, however, the doors are wide open and um, it, the fencing looks quite new, so we're not really sure what it is. If you have any idea, do let us know. We'll be very, very interested to find out. I see crab and my skipper's over there. Look, there's, on, there's one, uh, there's two on the rock over there. And it's one to, I've also spotted eight crabs. The island was also used as a drug rehabilitation centre for people getting over opium addiction. It was closed just in the 70s and the places that were housed, all of these people, the prisons awards, the opium recoverers, they are now what you can go camping in. Quite a stark contrast from what they used to be used for and now what they can be used for too. Look, just along the line of the sea, can you see them? Some crabs look like they're waving at us. That is Lazarus Island where we are heading very very shortly. We're actually going to cross over the walkway there. These trees have got amazing roots and they're really really tall. So we're heading over to Lazarus Island, which was also used as a island where they would send people with a vitamin B deficiency. And it was also a large fishing village until just the 70s. Lazarus Island, we're nearly there. She's got a hand press Nespresso machine. and breezy, very hot. What are you making? A volcano. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> Interesting creatures around. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a cold, cold character. Okay. Okay. Let me give you a warm bit. <laughs> <laughs> Still pretty empty. I guess even though the boat was full, everybody kind of spreads out because there's nature trails as well as the beach here. Really nice spot to get away to. That is pretty cool. It's so lovely just sitting up here, taking a few moments just to sit and take in everything that's around us. I think in Singapore it's so easy to constantly hear the air conditioning or the traffic and here it's just water and wind and it's just, it's just beautiful. Um, the water over here is a lot clearer, even clearer than over at East Coast Park. Um, we experienced some amazingly clear water there recently um, and this is fun. The, the, the water moves a bit more over here into the cove um, and our kids are having a great time. The sand here is a lot finer than at East Coast Park as well which makes life a bit easier for the kids. There's not as many sort of rocks getting caught underneath fingernails and that sort of stuff but they're having a really good time and so are we um, and that's fantastic. Um, I've just spotted while I'm sat up here how the um, waves kind of chase each other around the edge of uh, this little bit that sticks out. It's just really cool. Um, obviously it's the way that the water flows but it does look like it just chases itself along um, the edges of the, of the rocks here and that's fun just to watch. I don't know if you can see it but we found a mud 
the skipper. Skipping across the water. We've had a really lovely time, just chilled out on the beach, making some sand volcanoes, finding seaweed, listening to all the different sounds. It is really, really warm. It's beautiful. So we are now heading back to catch the boat to head to Kusu Island for a little bit. You can stay here a little bit longer and then get a boat back straight to the Marina Point Ferry. But we want to go and see one of the islands because we've heard it's pretty cool there too. I walk in the shade. Everybody in the family has a pair of Crocs and I didn't have any until yesterday. I find people either love Crocs or they hate them. No, people <laughs> either love Crocs or they don't know that they love Crocs yet. <laughs> That's it. Millie was one of those people. I'm converted. Our friend Delini, after telling me the day she buys Crocs is the day that Jesus returns, she was also looking at how much crocs are. So let's be honest, people. <laughs> Get over yourselves, buy a pair of crocs. Have comfy feet. Have comfy feet. Be happy. <laughs> when our friend Sam bought crocs, he was so pleased he had a mask on because he said he was smiling like a lunatic just because he had these on his feet. <laughs> this beautiful stretch of beach is actually where turtles come and lay their eggs, which is pretty exciting. If you kind of want the uh, the bar by the beach, I guess Sentosa's where to go. East Coast Park's, I guess, a little bit easier to get to, um, quicker to get to, and you've got lots of places nearby for food. But if you want like the castaway experience, then this is the place to come. <laughs> I guess you're tied to the boating times, to when you can get here and when you need to get off. Unlike East Coast Park and Sentosa, you can pretty much stay as long as you like. Although they do have a closing time at Sentosa, but. Uh, this is just lovely to be away and there's not many people around either because I guess you're only limited to how many people come and go on the ferry but when we were arriving some people were already leaving I think the first ferry departs at 9 a.m. and then I think you have to leave by uh, maybe five but don't quote me on that check out all of the times because some of the times are different for public holidays and unless you want to camp out under the stars you better catch that last boat back. Although I did mention that to the kids and they were like, yeah, we could camp here, which would be quite fun. I wouldn't mind it actually. But uh, yeah, I'm not too sure what nightlife would be here when the sun goes down. I'm amazed we haven't been here sooner to be honest. It's our sort of place, so we'll be back quite a lot and um, definitely recommending it to friends. But we're hopping back on the ferry to head towards Kusu Island or Turtle Island. Aspen is storming ahead because she's desperate to sit on the top deck which is going to be a lot of fun. Island, which means tortoise island and there's a really nice story that this island was formed when a couple of guys a malay man and a chinese man fell in the sea and a magical tortoise grew into this island to save them it's a really lovely story but actually the island was made from reclaimed land it was originally really small and it was made bigger and it used to have lots of the burials for the coos It was actually used as a burial site for some of the bodies of the patients that died that were on quarantine on the other islands we were, but now it's been turned into, it almost kind of has like a bit of a holiday resort. It's a lot more paved, it's a lot more kind of done up. There's a really nice feel as we first come on. So we're gonna go and explore and see what's around. It makes an awful lot of sense to have solar panels here because it's very sunny. Obviously we're in, in the tropics but also because there's not a lot of shade here at all um, and it's just an open area. So loads of solar panels. We're gonna find out, I've got no idea where, what they're supplying with electricity, but there'll be plenty of it, I'm sure. There's an annual pilgrimage here on Kusu Island and here at the temple, it's a very peaceful sort of atmosphere. You can smell incense burning and um, the tourists around here are really, really quiet. Actually, I'm probably being a bit too loud. 
So we're gonna have a little look around and explore and see what we can find. The temple is really beautiful. There's people in there lighting incense, giving offerings. A really, really nice place to be and to come in such a good location. There's a little shop in there that sells water, which was great because we were starting to run low and there's a washroom as well. So we are hydrated again, wandering along under the shade of the tree. Lots of kind of little pergolas, I guess you'd call them. There's a food center here as well, but that's not open at the moment. There is an annual pilgrimage here when the food center is said to be open. And you can imagine like the bars, everybody coming here to pay respects, give offerings, and then having food in this beautiful location. The kids have made friends with a guy who's down inside one of the tortoise shelters feeding them, and some of these terrapins are really, really big. There's a big one in there that we've seen poke its head out. Looks like it would be massive, but the guy's kind of talking to Aspen and Mala about them, feeding them, letting her pick them up. It's really, really sweet. While the kids uh, feed some more turtles, I'm gonna have a little look. There's a big walkway upwards, um, 200 and something steps, which is where people would take um, themselves up for the pilgrimage that happens here every year. So I'm just gonna go up and have a look and see what it's like up there. Little chair for someone to have a rest on their way up. About 75 steps up. Starting to get out of breath, but realizing how unfit I am, it's all good. But it's beautiful. Lots of jungle around us. There is a beautiful yellow painted temple right here on the top of the hill here on the island. Um, it is very peaceful up here, there's no one else up here. Um, and the yellow it's a really nice feel actually, it's very different to anything else that you'd experience in Singapore. Um, it doesn't have that same sort of, I don't know, Singaporean city feel to it maybe. It really does feel like we're in Southeast Asia. Sometimes it does feel like Singapore is a bit of a, um, I don't know, maybe a Western version of Southeast Asia. I guess because of the big city and everything. But this really does feel like we're out in the foothills of somewhere or other. And, um, it's really quite beautiful. Up here, other than a distant plane every now and again as we are in the flight path of Changi Airport, you can just hear nature. Birds, the breeze and some insects. It's beautiful. Just looking at how steep the hill is just down here, and the rocky formation of some of the walls here, I've realized that this whole thing has just been built into uh, the top of the mountain here, so the top of the hill here. So some of the bits have just been uh, screwed onto the rock that's around here. Some of the rock's been chipped out to be able to make a flatter surface. So yeah, it's really quite amazing up here. It's a different route down, so I'm gonna to need to hurry up because We've got a ferry to catch to get us back to the main island, but just down here I've noticed it on the leaves of these beautiful little ribbons tied. And um, it's got such a lovely feel up here. I'm just so pleased that I took the time to run up these stairs. So I'll be back here for sure. Um, hopefully with a lot more information. <laughs> the stairs aren't even. <laughs> uh, with more information on, uh, on this place. Fascinating, absolutely love it. <laughs> just reached the bottom of the hill and there is this beautiful silent beach. Man, we gotta come back here. This is so beautiful. So there's a little tortoise sanctuary and the whole thing, I didn't realize until after I walked around it, is actually shaped like a giant tortoise. The guys that were in there that were helping the kids out, they work for the ferry and they come here and they know the tortoises really, really well. He said there's a really big one in there that's about 35 kg and we just saw the nose and head poking out and apparently just before we got here, she was out and they fed it two bananas. So that kind of tells you the size of it. The kids had a great time. So we're going to keep exploring. There's a really nice breeze. And we've got 10 minutes till the ferry. Let's go. Come on, you two. Oh my, the water here at Kusu Island is unbelievable. 
Um, this is definitely our sort of place. So, so beautiful around here, loving it. We've only been here a really short while, really. Um, you get longer at the other islands, I guess, depending on which ferry you choose to take. We were just saying that we think next time we will just come to this island first, spend a bit of a time on the beach here. There's shelters here, which there isn't at the other one. There are toilets here close by as well. And yeah, the water is just beautiful. Squeezing out every second we can have here, so we had to run back. <laughs> We made it back onto the ferry after a whistle stop tour of Kusu Island. Heading back, go and find some dinner. Sandy, salty hair. It's been a really, really lovely day. We just got back to the mainland. We had to go through customs, which I wasn't expecting. Kind of felt like we've actually been away on holiday. And this amazing day out was actually gifted to us by one of our viewers. So we are so thankful to be having this opportunity to go and knowing that our YouTube channel has been giving you some joy over the time. We are so appreciative of your support and this lovely gift for us. It's a really nice family memory for a really long time to come. Yeah, as part of the gift, uh, this lovely viewer gave us um, a dinner as well. Uh, it was meant to be on Sentosa because we thought that the ferry left from Sentosa, but it doesn't. So we are going to stick to the red line, which is where the MRT is here, and going to go and find something, probably some Korean barbecue. We've come to Facebook at the top of Orchard Central. What a view! This is a Korean barbecue place. I haven't been here before and I've been wanting to come to Korean barbecue for a while. John has been with a few of his friends, so now it's our turn and yeah, check out the view. This is Korean barbecue. We get the food brought along and then we just grill it in the middle um, and eat it when it's ready. It's very, very simple. gifted everything to us so yeah really really great it's been an amazing day it has and uh, my first time trying korean barbecue really good we ate a lot i said if you haven't been before you get a little tick list and just tick some stuff off because it's really good to try some things the kids tried some new things as well we ate quite a lot i feel very very full this is good after a holiday at the beach time to get the mrt home it is <laughs> i thought you were going to say something else i thought you were going to do the thing. bye okay <laughs> Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon. Bye.